Hi everyone, Alex Williams of the New Stack here today with Tyler Hannon, Director of Technical Marketing at Basho. Tyler today is going to show us the new Basho data platform. Good to see you, Tyler. So for those of you who are familiar with Basho, or maybe for those of you who aren't, Basho is known for being the creator and maintainer of Rioc. Rioc is an available, scalable, distributed database, as well as a available, scalable, and distributed object storage solution. Because we're in the NoSQL market, we've, we've seen a shift in the market over time. NoSQL solutions began to be adopted in point solutions, and then as uh, enterprises and startups Startups alike saw value in that adoption and in those deployments they began to deploy them in multi-model solutions people leveraging both key value stores and object storage alongside each other and then they began to adopt more technology components what we're announcing with the Basho data platform is a way to control and simplify the creation and distribution of that technology stack that represents a modern big data application, while at the same time ensuring the availability, scalability, and operational simplicity that Basho is known for. So let's start by talking about the data platform itself. The data the platform provides a series of core services, and you can think of these as a, as a framework that enable scalability, distribution, and fault tolerance for a variety of resources. And those resources are the tools that we see customers and we see the market adopting widely. So to dive into that in great detail, what that looks like is a bit like this origami diagram. You can see that we have our our core services, which are replication and synchronization and message routing, as well as some additional, but importantly, those core services are managing the replication and synchronization between storage instances like React KV and React S2 and service instances. These are new and these are exciting. An Apache Spark add-on for React as well as a Redis add-on for Rioc. And for those of you who followed along with us for a while, uh, our, our Apache Solar add-on for Rioc that's known as Rioc Search. So with that in mind, it's interesting to think about the capabilities for management and deployment that a data platform can provide, but sometimes I think it's better to look at it. So let's talk about the process of actually deploying code. We all know that it's, it's interesting, the challenge, of managing clusters of different code at scale. The process of doing so with the data platform is actually relatively straightforward. There's a series of very simple commands that allow me to look at my active services as well as allow me to add additional services as are required. But perhaps better than looking at those services on a screen it would be good to actually run through them. So I'm running over here to a, a set of uh, instances that are running the Basho data platform presently. And the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to start by issuing a simple React admin command. For those of you who know and are familiar with React, will know this command. It's a cluster status. And it's going to tell us that we have currently three instances of React that are joined together in a cluster. For those of you who use React today, you'll notice there's this little key C of claimant. That's a new thing. It's an exciting thing and something you should keep in the back of your mind, particularly as we start talking about Spark. But now let's look at what I actually have running from the perspective of the data platform. That's as simple as issuing a React platform admin command. So very simple to React admin and saying what services are available. And it shows me not only my running services, in this case I have a Spark service up and running, but also the services that are available for me to deploy. You could think of a service configuration and a running service as two different things. So let's start by talking about Spark. So I think many of us are aware of and know of the power of Spark as an analysis framework. What the Basho data platform provides is the ability to write it like React, but then analyze it 
like Spark. The integration of React KV with Apache Spark through our Spark connector provides a wealth of analysis capability that's important for the modern application stack. Importantly, we also do this while simplifying cluster management. That C that I mentioned earlier, Earlier, that's actually React Ensemble, which is a consensus algorithm. So you can deploy large clusters of Spark without using Zookeeper. You can actually leverage React's key core claim capabilities via React Ensemble to do that. So that's so, a, so that's a different kind of a consensus algorithm than we see a lot out there, like in comparison to Zookeeper and Console, and even you know etcd as a key value store. Indeed, it is different. It's based on um, a Paxos style algorithm. Uh, React Ensemble is actually the core of what powers the strong consistency offering that's in React as well. So we we're able to take that code and expose it to a much larger use case. So let's actually look at Spark. Uh, in this case, I have an instance of Spark up and running. You can see that it's in my group deck. Demo. It's running on my node dev1. I'm actually going to kick off a quick Spark job. What this Spark job is doing is it's actually reading publicly available football data for, for a number of years. It's reading that data from React. It's going to run a series of analyses against that data in Spark, and then it's going to persist that data back to React. And that's important because I want the ability not only to analyze my data, but persist the results of that analysis for the purpose of an application picking it up or even another Spark process. So just to show you that this is real, this is the Football Demo Scala project that that R Spark submit, React Spark submit is kicking off. You can see that it uses the, the standard React Java client APIs, but importantly, there's this new Basho Spark connector. This is what's providing that ability to not only read data, but also post analysis to write that data back to React. So if I flip back over to my Spark instance, I can actually see that my job has, has run. In, in what data was persisted, I, I know what, what data I was analyzing because I wrote the job. But a simple way to look at the data that's been persisted is just to do a bucket list in React. So I'm going to list the buckets, and I can see that I have this new bucket called uh, football team wins and losses. So I may be interested in what keys are stored in that bucket. I'm going to do a list keys against this. This is sort of an operational anti-pattern because it's a very heavy task, but it's it's interesting because it'll show us what keys have been persisted. Uh, you can see here the, the three-letter names of all sorts of football teams, uh, including, interestingly, Denver. Uh, we happen to be in Denver presently. This is where I live. So I'll, I'll look at the results of, of Denver's win and loss. And I can see that Denver has actually won 91 games and lost 90 games in the 10 years of data that was analyzed. That's interesting. I've now read data from React, I've processed it, and I've persisted it back into a data store that ensures availability and scalability. But what if I have to control latency at the edge? I've got React and I have Spark connected to each other, but I'm interested in ensuring that my application is providing the most lowly latent offering possible. Well, in order to do that, I might choose to to deploy Redis. And I would like to write it like React and cache it like Redis. The Redis add-on for the Basher Data Platform improves general application performance by enabling that reduced latency that Redis provides. But if you've deployed Redis in production, you can know that it's somewhat difficultly available. And that's where the data platform comes into play, is taking the advanced caching capability of Redis, but making it enterprise grade. So let's look at what that looks like. Here I have a service that's running that's Spark. I'm interested in adding a Redis service. So the process of doing that is very simple. All that I need to do is I need to add a service. So I'm going to add my service Redis, you can see that I specify you know, what actual code it's going to be running, as well as the port that Redis is listening on. 
When I've added that service, I also want to add the Basho data proxy that proxies that service for Redis. So I'm going to add the Redis proxy. In this case, you can see that I've given a listen port, where will the proxy listen, as well as the Redis port and a React port. So now I have those service configurations available to me, but I need to start them up. I actually want them to run in my environment. That's really as simple as, again, a React platform admin command, start service. I tell it where I want that service to start. I give it a group to run in and the name of the service configuration that it's going to use. So Redis, and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the uh, Redis proxy. So React platform admin, start service to the group demo, Redis proxy. Then just to show that this is real, I can issue my same React platform admin command services, and I can see that my Redis, my Redis proxy, and my Spark services are up and running. So the Batcher data platform is not only managing Redis and managing Spark, it provides a data proxy for the capability of a read-through cache. Now, read-through cache. You might not know what that means. A read-through cache is very simple. I'm going to use the Redis CLI, the Redis command line interface, and I'm going to get the key from Redis DEN, D-E-N, Denver. And it errors. That data isn't in Redis. The data hasn't been uh, replicated from Reoc KV to Redis. However, using the Basho Redis proxy, it's as simple as putting in the port number where that proxy is listening, doing that same get again. You can see that now I've got the result of 91 and 90. It's actually done a read from Reoc KV, but importantly, it's persisted that result to Redis as well. Just to prove that's real, you know, perhaps we have an office in Seattle. Perhaps I'm, I'm interested in the result set that Seattle has. Seattle also doesn't have data in Redis. But if I use the Basho data proxy, I can pull that data about Seattle. I can see they have 94 wins and 92 losses. Uh, one of those losses in particular was very painful for a Denver fan. And that data is now persisted in Redis. If I have a big data application. I'm probably already using Spark. To leverage the Basho data platform, I don't have to change my tooling around Spark. I still build Spark jobs as I build them today. I'm just able to get the data from React and persist it to React. If I'm leveraging Redis, I already have applications that know how to talk to Redis and know how to uh, interface with Redis. Instead of changing my tool set entirely, I simply point that towards the Basho data platform, and I'm able to enjoy the benefits of Redis caching with the persistence of RIA. So in short, that's the data platform. It's available, it's scalable, it's simple. It takes all of these different applications that we deploy as part of a modern application stack, starting with Redis, with Apache Spark, with solar, and it enables you to deploy them and manage them very simply and at scale. Well, Tyler, thank you very much for the demo. I, it was interesting to see that progression. And in particular, I, I like the uh, mention you make of the Denver Seattle game. So <laughs> it was painful. <laughs> I might have cried. <laughs> Okay. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll look forward to watching Basho and its progress and the evolution of this data platform. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.